Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now, in the last video, I showed you guys how to get this map from RPG Maker into Game Maker in about 10 minutes or so. Like I said in the last video, if I wasn't talking, um, you guys could probably get this done in about three, maybe four minutes. Um, so, if you've already created maps in RPG Maker, take that script from the last video and uh, use the process that I demonstrated. I yeah, sorry about that guys. I'm practically working on the street right now. My computer is right next to a window and people are on a main road, so people always drive past like that. So I, I do apologize for the sound quality. Um, I still am not in my new house yet, so when I am in the new house, we will have a proper studio, soundproof walls ready to go for this sort of thing. Until then, I do apologize for the sound and the quality. So in this video, we're gonna be going over creating collisions. Now we've already done collisions in the past so I won't spend too long on this process but yeah we, we need to get some sort of collisions for the picture map uh, which is basically what we have on our screen at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is come over here to sprites, come to system, add a new group and we're going to call this collisions. Inside of that create a sprite, call it spur collision and edit the sprite. Now I'm going to create a new sprite, it's going to be 32 by 32 pixels. And zoom in on that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this red color here, maybe a darker red. I'm going to set the, opac the opacity down to about 64. And I'm just going to fill that image with 64 opacity red. And this is going to represent our collision on the map. So just save that sprite. Now we go down to our objects, go into system, and this time I want to create an object, I want to call it Object uh, World Collide. Well, actually, no, let's just call it Object Collision. And give it that sprite we just created. No sprite Collision. Oh, Game Maker just had a bit of an issue there. I don't know what that was. Let's just move these things around. Okay. Alright then. That is a very interesting error the game maker is giving me. It only happens on that window object. Alright, never mind. I'm going to avoid that window object for now. So we've created our object collision. Go to our party. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause this video and sort out this issue. One second. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. So open up your party and then object hero. And we're going to add a collision event and we're going to add make sure that that collision event is with system object underscore collision. And once again we need to put our collide with script inside of that. All our collide script with was just to comment just to enable this action to actually be valid. So now on the home city map we can go to objects select the system object collision um, item we got, sorry, one more thing, we need to go back to Object Collision, select Use Physics, select the collision shape to be a box, position the box over the sprite, and then also set its density to 0.0. .0. And what this means is that it, it won't move, it can't be pushed and it, it's, um, doesn't, uh, it doesn't respond to collisions in the same way that a regular physics object would. So now place this object anywhere you like on the map. I'm just going to do the borders for now. We can actually stretch this object out. So what you see is there, I've just stretched it out. So if I go all the way down here to the bottom of the world, uh, my object just disappeared. Game Maker Editor does have a few little issues with it. There we go. You just delete that one and stretch this one. There we go. So you can actually just create sort of collisions by stretching out this object on top of things that you want to be... Collidable, just like that. So we just create some. Well, it's probably better if you work top down as well, just because the game maker editor does have some issues, like I've said multiple times. There we go. So we've create we're creating sort of the box for our world at the moment. This is our world bounding box, right? So we just create a few more collisions. Uh, it's very easy to do it like this just place our collisions in the world and these collisions they scale with the physics object basically so we can create very easy very fast and very simple
collidable shapes. So I won't spend too much time doing this. I will fast forward this to you guys. So I'm just going to cover the entire house in collision shapes. And Game Maker doesn't support any sort of um, any uh, what do you call them? The ability to turn off specific certain layers, which is kind of annoying. So I'll show you guys a really cool trick to get that to work as well. And one thing you guys definitely want to make sure that you're doing is stretching these images out. You definitely want to stretch them. The reason being is that each one of these objects does take up a um, one slot of our, well not a slot, it does take up, a, it basically it takes up a spot in our object list. And it's better to have a smaller object count in your game, just for performance, so that's sort of one of the things that does drive up performance, is the object count. So in this instance here, uh, that should be fine. One there, stretch there. This one here, see how it covers this water? We can actually stretch this, just straight across like that. We do need to do this water pool, so let's just do this in the most efficient way possible. Actually, this is probably not the most efficient way possible, but it doesn't use up too many objects, so it should be fine. Now, <clears throat> I just want to show you guys a just a quick little um, sort of issue. These collision shapes take up 32 by 32 pixels, but obviously in this instance here we can't put that because if we put one here, the player would not be able to walk through this path here, and if we put one here, we'd be blocking most of the grass. What you can actually do inside of Game Maker is if you set your snap to say 8 pixels, which is about what this um, wall is here, we can zoom right in on that and we can actually create a collision shape there. But now that the snap is different we can actually scale this down to conform with that wall slot there. So we can actually just cover up that section there which leaves this path here on the left hand side open and this gr grass here on the right hand side stays open as well. It's a cool little tip I just thought I'd share with you guys. Okay, so once you believe that your map has been fully covered in collision shapes, I'm going to show you a quick tip to turn these on and off inside of the editor. If you come down here to sprites, come back to system collisions, add another sprite and call this sprite collision off. Edit the sprite, create a new image and we're just going to leave this as a blank 32 by 32 pixel image. Now obviously all these little red areas are kind of annoying and you know, most uh, more advanced tile editors and game editors would probably have a way for you to turn the layer visibility on and off. Unfortunately, Game Maker doesn't, so we sort of have to go about it this way. If you come to Object Collision, you can just change your sprite to the sprite collision off, and then your map will no longer be visible with those sprites. This is just good for when you're working, um, when you want to go back to working with objects, or if you want to go back to, you know, doing some edits with the tile set underneath, and those collisions are in the way. You can come back and you can set that back to uh, collision, sprite collision. Just press OK and you'll be able to see those collisions again. One thing we do want to do is we want to tick this visible box. What this means is that the collision won't be visible inside of the game when the game runs, but it will still be visible in the editor. So let's run our game and have a look and see if this is working. Okay, so as you can see, we cannot, we can no longer collide with the fence, we can't collide with the trees as we couldn't before, we can't collide with the house, we can go inside the door, which is fantastic. So pretty much these collisions are successful and working correctly. I mean we could come back and we could adjust these paths so that their collision works a bit closer to the side, like this one here. But for the most part this is working quite well. We can still get in front, we still have Z ordering basically, so we can still get in front of things. The only thing you'll notice is that we can't get behind these houses. Um, and that's fine for now, I mean like I said, you can come back and we can edit these 
collision shapes a little more later. Um, so yeah, and let's just test out this collision that we made over here because this was a this collision over here was an interesting one that we sort of just put together on the fly. So you can see we've done that a little differently there. So that's why there's that jump. Like I said, you could come around with these collision objects and you could go around all of the grass on an 8x8 grid and just add the collisions so that they do exist on the side of these walls. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to really bother with that. I've just shown you the process. Uh, oh, I must have forgotten to put collisions on these two houses. I didn't see those. Uh, and yes, these bottom walls down here, they do have collisions. There we go, so we're colliding with those. It's pixel perfect collision. And just so you guys can see uh, our performance benchmark, how many frames per second we are losing or gaining, we are still well above 1,000 frames per second. So we're, we're hovering about 1,000 to 1,250. You know, so we've added a lot of objects to our game. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, we are going to lose a little bit of performance in that sense. However, our game is running at over 1,000 frames per second. So, you could probably make a map three or four times the size of this map using this technique, and it would well be within spec. Oh, there we go. I've just closed the debugger. I'm running at 2,000, 2,100 frames per second. Well, 2,500. There you go. I think I just saw a 2,700. There you go, 2,777 frames per second. So we are well, well above um, 60 frames per second, which is what our target frame rate should be. You can consider all of these frames per second as basically overhead for your game. So we've got tiles, we've got quests, we've got NPCs, we've got collisions uh, in our game. We've probably got a few hundred objects on our map already, and the game is running at over 2,500 frames per second. So not a problem in that department guys um, in the next video we're probably gonna start adding some NPCs to this map uh, I'll fix up the collisions uh, the collision that I missed down here and we'll just add a couple of NPCs we may go into adding another map and that will sort of be a teleport to another room just to show you guys how it's working so once again um, please like this video and please uh, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel share it as much as possible on Twitter and Facebook with your fellow game developers because um, you know we'd like to get this information out there uh, to as many people as possible so that you guys can start creating awesome games so once again thank you guys for watching uh, cheers